Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning into my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. This is my YouTube channel, Everything About Concrete, where I video a lot of the work we do. Kind of show you guys what we do and how we do it and try to teach some of you. Today what we're doing is this pretty pretty typical job for us. We got a house, a garage, and an entryway. Probably a, it's about a 2,200 square foot house. I think the garage was about 28 by 26, and then the entry is 16 by six. Now we're a sub on this job. We're actually working for the foundation contractor. The guys come in, do the concrete walls. They don't want to do their own floors, so they, they sub out all their floors to us. And there's a lot of other subs on this job that the general contractor hires, like he hires a separate excavation contractor, so that guy comes in, you know, digs, digs it all out, puts the gravel back in, and then uh, the heating guy will come in and do the styrofoam, the wire mesh, and those radiant heat tubes, so he'll get that stuff all ready, and he'll also do all the plumbing you see in here, all the pipes for the house. So there's uh, the excavation guys a sub, the heating and plumbing guys a sub, wear a sub. It's just kind of how things work around here. Everybody kind of specializes in something up here in Maine. Uh, there are a few outfits that do everything, but not very many. A lot of guys don't like to pour concrete floors that do foundations. So there's, there's quite a few guys, you know, up here like myself that just specialize in doing flat work like us. So it's a pretty good size house. It's getting real chilly up here. It's actually in November. So the concrete, we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete. We got, I call it warm water. It's about 100 degree water in the concrete. And we use accelerator. So by the time the concrete shows up on the job site, it gets mixed in, you know, obviously with the sand, the aggregate. It's probably around... 70 degrees concrete temperature is probably around 70 degrees air temperature right now this early in the morning is close to 40 you know it's i think it was around 38 to 40 degrees this morning so it's kind of chilly and with this type of you know with this type of mixture with the with the warm water pouring on top of styrofoam styrofoam is a big deal when the, the temperatures get cold if you pour right on top of dirt cold dirt it sucks the heat right out of the concrete. The concrete just doesn't set up very well. It just sits there all day long. But when you pour on styrofoam, styrofoam helps insulate the concrete so it keeps the, the warmth in the concrete and it, it'll dry up much, much faster. So right now what we're doing, we got three, three loads here. I think I got three 10 and a half yard loads showing up. We're gonna get this first one dumped right out, try to get most of these pipes, get around most of these pipes with the first truck. We're just matching top of wall. That's that makes the pour pretty easy when we just match top of wall. And then all we really need to do is just shoot our pads with the laser in the middle to get our height in the middle. And then we'll just screed off those pads. Those two form those little boxes you see in there too are, are set right to grade. So that's that helps, you know, having those set to grade kind of gives you something to go by as you're pouring. And then also when you come back and power trial. It, uh, it allows you just to power trial kind of right over the top of the board, which makes power trialing quite a bit easier. Now I'm going to have the, this will be the pour video right here, and I'll have us finishing all these floors, you know, the house garage and the entryway on the next video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, go down there and hit subscribe and you can see how we finish a job like this too with the power trialing, you know, wiping out some of it by hand. It's going to have some broom finishing, it's going to have the sod joints, you get to see all that stuff on the next video. So right now, you know, Darren's over there on the left, he's magging the edges. Luke and I are kind of what we call tuning in the concrete. We're trying to get it as close to level as we can without getting it low. And then Harvey's holding the chute, he's kind of controlling the speed of the concrete, uh, the truck moving truck forward and backwards if we need it. This works really, really good with four guys, uh, especially on something this size. A lot of times, like Harvey works for himself, the guy running the shoot. But, you know, we give him a call, tell him we need a hand. He always shows up, gives us a hand. So that's a big, big bonus to have a, a guy with his type of knowledge to come up and just help us. It makes our jobs a lot easier. But on a lot of pours, it's just the three of us. It's just me, Darren, and Luke. And, you know, we'll do that stuff. We'll do this kind of same kind of stuff by ourselves. 
just takes a little bit longer, you know, having Harvey around makes things go a lot faster, just makes everybody's job a lot easier. Another thing that we like to do, which, you know, if you're pouring something for yourself, you don't have to do, but we, we like dumping that first truck right out, just get 10 and a half yards down on the ground. But we also know how fast we need to work to screed it before it starts setting up with that warm water and the accelerator in it. So, you know, when you get used to using a company all the time, you, you kind of understand the, the characteristics and the variables of the concrete and how fast it sets or how slow it sets based on the slump you pour it at, based on how warm the water is, and based on how much accelerator you put in. So it's kind of like a, I like to talk about it as a living, breathing animal. You get to know the animal and you get a comfort with it. And most days, it's it's pretty close to the same. It acts very, very much like the, the day before. So now the second truck's out there. He's he's backing in and getting mixed up and getting ready to go while we're screeding this first one. This is one of the reasons we like dumping stuff out uh, in one truck like that is because the screeding part, once you once you understand what you're doing with the screed, like especially with a power screed like this, it doesn't take very long at all to get this stuff down and screeded. You know, you get your pads shot, get them struck, and then you just go to town with the screeding like this. And then you can bull float everything from the outside so you don't need to wait for the bull float guy to get stuff bull floated. We also add, you know, as well as adding the accelerator to the mix, we still use the water reducer in the concrete. And the water reducer lets us pour, you know, a six or a seven inch slump without really affecting the set time at all, to be honest with you. It doesn't really affect the set time. So we can pour a pretty loose slump, which help, helps us get this thing in a little bit faster. You know, you, if you try to pour a four or five inch slump on stuff like this with the hot water, with the accelerator, Honestly, you're just going to kill yourself. You're better off using a little bit of water reducer, bumping up the slump, making things go just a little bit easier. And then again, here's that second truck. So we'll we'll get almost all of this poured out with the second truck. Leave a little bit of a hole at the end in case we're a little bit high so we can pull it into that hole. And then we'll get it screeded. Sometimes if we're going around a lot of pipes, we'll just screed by hand. It's just a little bit faster, I think, to go around a bunch of obst obstacles by hand versus using the power screed. And then out in the open areas like this, you can see how easy it is using that power screed. And I think once you get a hang, get the hang of using that, and you have a couple good rakers behind you, you get stuff really, really flat. And then that also makes bolt floating this thing real easy. You can see how the vibration brings up the cream and the paste, kind of helps settle the aggregate just a little bit below the surface. And then when you go to run the bow float over it, if you can get this thing flat like Luke is right there, running that bow float over it is usually just down and back once, and it's nice and smooth. You can see how that looks like butter under there. No humps, no dips, that thing just smooths it right out. And that's what we like when before we power trial is we like a really nice smooth surface like that. All right, we got the house done. We'll just empty him off in the garage. And then we got that third truck. You want it around the pipe, Sure. You want it around the pipe? Yeah, maybe a gallon. Maybe a gallon or two and just spin it. Now the garage has a couple inches slope in it from the back towards the front. Typically, we don't, we don't power screed stuff with slopes. Just like we wouldn't, we wouldn't power screed something with a floor drain in it because, you know, the vibration of the power screed sometimes will sag the concrete if it's sloping. So we save the power screed and use it just for flat stuff. I mean, you, you can do a slope with it. You just got to be really, really careful. And we just soon screed stuff by hand just to make sure it has that perfect slope. Um, we don't want any dips or humps in anything like this, especially a garage where water might drip off the car. They want that water to kind of run towards the doors so they could brush it or squeegee it out the door if they wanted to. And well, sometimes the trick, there's a little trick with, uh, you know, when you got multiple trucks, so that second truck did most of the house, but it also did a little bit of the garage while that third truck was sitting out in the road, which sometimes that second truck will set up a little bit faster than the third truck. So that could lead to a little bit of uh, 
a little bit of uh, you know almost finishing like two different sections here in the garage with the power trial that's why we like to get stuff dumped as fast as possible so the concrete all sets just about at the same time it just makes finishing a little bit easier I and mean, that's the only thing you got to be careful with when you dump multiple trucks you know at a time on on one job like this is getting the trucks right back to back to back so the set times on them are almost the same too we screed you know wet screed like that on all our floors we'll make a wet pad with a laser and then we'll screed off a pad like that and then we can strike off like Luke is right there he's looking at the wet pad on he's got the brown sweatshirt now Darren there on the right is screeding off the wet pad and that's me on the other side I'm screeding off a pad that we used uh, when we snapped a chalk line on the wall to go by and we'll wet screed everything a lot of guys will use some different methods to screeding and that's fine it all works um, this is just the method that works best for us once you get the hang of screeding like this you know we screed two guys on a screed that's a 14 foot screed all the time so we basically just use the same rhythm and then you can see Darren as he's moving his feet back he's kind of kicking in a little bit for his toes to fill in those little those little low marks he makes by moving his foot backwards you can screed a lot of concrete really fast when I first started out you know 15 16 years old I started out with a commercial outfit you know we would do 5,000 8,000 10,000 15,000 square feet at a time and you know basically once you get used to that two guys two guys would jump on the 14 foot screed with that amount of square footage and they would they would kind of just screed the whole thing it just made the job a little bit easier on those big big jobs to do one thing versus versus do the rake and do the bow float and do the screeding so there were many many multiple jobs where i would just grab the screed and you know screen 15,000 square feet we'd start at six in the morning would be done by probably you know, 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning with the pour, and then we just hang out and finish it. All right, there's the house and garage. It's 8 46 right now. We started about 7 30. Go get this entryway done. Creek setting up pretty good with the warm water. They got they got about 100 degree warm water in it, plus we're putting a couple bags of cow in it for accelerator, so it's actually setting up pretty good for us. Now the concrete it looks like it's drying up a little bit which is perfectly fine since this is all we got left this has about an inch and a half slope on it in six feet out towards me where i'm holding the chute right there so we're pulling up the double row of rebar around the edge and the wire mesh as we go getting that up get some concrete and some of that rock some of that aggregate under it just to hold it up now this to me it kind of looks like a little bit of an afterthought i mean a lot of times when the guys come and do the foundation, they'll put a frost wall under this little entryway section too. I don't know. I'm just guessing, but it just seems like they would have put the foundation under it if it had been on the plan. And uh, they probably just said afterwards, you know what, we should have a little pad for the entryway. So they're just making this kind of a floating slab. Uh, that's just my thought. I don't know for sure. I didn't get a chance to ask the general contractor about that. But we're going to make this little piece... We'll make this little piece of broom finish. We'll score a joint down the middle of it. Right now, Luke's magging up there against the wall to a chalk line that we we shot. And then top of form, top of that wood is, is grayed too, so we can screed right off the top of the form. I'm just going to grab onto that 7-foot screed and just slowly screed it backwards. I mean, Darren's going to help me out by raking a little bit, but... That's the basic process. Um, you know, when you pour a big house and garage and an entry like this, this, I don't know, I don't know how long this took us. It probably took us an hour and 45 minutes, two hours to do everything, you know, with the manpower that we had. And it's cold out. You can see we're wearing sweatshirts, we're wearing gloves. At least the sun's out, though. This is something I have always done. I wouldn't recommend doing it though. <laughs> uh, I don't, and I don't let I don't let the guys do it. It's just me. But I, you know, we go to clean out the chute sometimes. If I don't have my chute cleaner right with me, I'll just run up the chute, hang on to it really good, scrape it down, 
if we need just that little bit of extra. Darren said we need a little bit of extra in there. So rather than just run some more in the chute and then have a, a chute full of concrete, I'll just run up, scrape it down. I bet I've done that a thousand times in 42 years. And then uh, now the chute's clean. Now Chris can just pull ahead, clean the chute out, and hardly anything's going to come out of the chute. But I don't recommend doing that. That's not not approved. <laughs> so then I'll just finish screeding it. Javi's going Javi's gonna to grab onto the bow float. And because the slump's a little drier here, he might have to go back and forth twice to get a nice smooth finish. We're just going to finish this little by hand. We'll mag it. Probably a couple times, mag it out really nice and fine, and then we'll drag a broom over it. And that'll be on the next video. So again, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe now, come on back. And on the very next video, I'll have the power troweling, the hand finishing, cutting down the garage doorways, getting to see the saw cuts and everything on that that video right there. So we'll uh, check this out right here. We'll be right back. All right, 310 and a half yarders. We'll see how, I, I say about a couple hours before we get a power trial. We check this right here, let's take a look. Yeah, that's still pretty soft, but I can, you can tell it's firming up underneath there a little bit. But I would say on daylight pay, it's probably 55-ish right now. A little bit of sun, a little bit of clouds, so I'm gonna say a couple hours about nine o'clock let's say around 11 o'clock we'll come back check it and uh see where we're at 